for you, both of you, um, for all of us here, what is your favorite like twice song era for for you guys? That is like the most loaded question. <laughs> it's so hard. There's so many. There are so many. Hello and welcome to the Craze Cast, a podcast run by the fans for the fans that brings you close to the action. My name is Rox and today I'm joined by my fellow host, Jang. Hello. As well as our uh, team member and managing editor, Kelly. Hello. Yay, Kelly! She's here! <laughs> to keep up with all our content, be sure to follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram, all at Craze Mag and YouTube, The Craze. And if you're watching this on YouTube before we begin, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe to our YouTube channel and catch our next episode and hit that bell for notifications for when we upload new videos. Welcome, Kelly! Yay! Thank we have you for having me. Yay! We haven't had a guest in a while actually i know it's been a long time our schedules are just not oh my they're <laughs> they're all over the place listen life is life how are you kelly hmm i'm tired <laughs> i have you can't see it since i mean maybe this is my my intention with not having video is that i have a big cup of coffee right next to me that's okay. my plan today that's okay how are you guys Tired as well. <laughs> Always tired. Always tired. Perpetually tired in this podcast. All you, the time. you hit like 26 and then you're never not tired. Right? Oh, that's so true. That is so true. And then like once you hit 29, you can't sit on the floor anymore because your back hurts. Oh my God. Speaking to the choir yesterday, <laughs> I was taking pictures at this convention. So around this time of recording, it's TwitchCon. I was taking pictures and I decided to like bend down to take picture with like um, this really decked out uh, car that has the VTubers on it. I was getting up, knees hurt immediately. And I'm like, oh no, we can't do these things anymore. <laughs> oh no, we're old. So we have a special episode for today. We haven't done an episode like this in a while. And um, and I thought, or we thought it would be a great idea to also showcase something that we just released. What did we release, Roxy? We just released our twice mini zine. Oh, good. Jay has it. I was like, I should have pulled mine out. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I was looking for mine like the whole entire time. So, so it's okay. So if you're watching this on YouTube, you can see the preview of the magazine. Yes. Our twice mini zine was just recently released. This is our fifth mini zine to come out and the first one where we feature a girl group. So finally, yeah, it's been hard to <laughs> hard to get that together, but we did it for twice. Um, and we do still have issues available, print issues available on the website, but they are going fairly quickly and will probably sell out soon. So <laughs> if you want a copy. I bought a whole bunch for my friends. So yeah, see? I, <laughs> I'm the one that ships them out. So I see everything that goes through. There we go. There we go. Kelly is a real one for her friends, but yes, a uh, really nice magazine. Um, like it is fairly small, but you know what? There's a lot of great articles in here. A lot of our writers um, put in a lot of hard work, especially also the design team, art team. So shout out to all of them because we want to also make sure that they are recognized as well for creating this issue. But it's all about Twice today. And so wanted to just talk about Twice and yeah. So I guess like, we don't really have a set like what is it what do we call it like, agenda there we go we don't have a set agenda of what we're going to talk about but for you both of you um for all of us here what is your favorite like twice song era for for you guys that is like the most loaded question <laughs> it's so hard there's so many there are so many, and would like to note that they are seven. Uh, take that back. Like to note that they are in their seventh year. They just renewed their contract, so 
we're going to be seeing twice for a little bit longer in the industry. So there's seven years of content and comebacks and literal albums upon albums to go through, which is why it in the issue it chronicles it. So we have almost everything up to date. It is up to date. I made sure because they had a comeback while this was in production. That's true. That's right. So at like the very end, it was like Connie, we have like there's there's another album that just came out. And like, what do we do? We're supposed to be comprehensive. So I will say that was impressive how fast she threw that together. Yep. yep. (laughs) I was impressed with that one. Yeah, that was that was an afternoon of panicking. I was like, wait, like we were about to send it to print. I was like, hold on, wait. We gotta fix this. Like something real quick. I want to say, I guess I'll start this off. I'm stuck between two. Um, my favorite particular songs from Twice has to be Dance the Night Away and um, Alcohol Free. I am totally in love with all their like summery beachy type comebacks, what they do. I think it's just because it takes you to a different fantasy when I mean not to say that they haven't done other concepts but I don't know like whenever those particular songs that's like my happy songs from them I feel a lot of just like I can get away from everything that is going on in the world if I listen to these songs or watch their music videos and it's just fun like it's those two songs that okay it's like I'm gonna dance to this and I'm gonna let loose and so that's for me like that's what I like about Twice and they're just so damn cute like honestly <laughs> they're so cute I can't I've I can't I've never been spoken <laughs> I'm just I feel like, like um like I just want to like more like this as much as I like your other more mature concepts I love your summer their summer concepts when they do it like this and they look just so gorgeous and every time that they do it it's more elevated than the next and I'm just like damn it this is this is why they are twice and this is why they are such a big popular girl group so that's my favorite I feel like you bring up a really good point because I think I'll get to my favorite song in a second because I, mm-hmm. I did decide on one even though it hurt um <laughs> the thing about twice that's like scary is that they really have just been getting like better each mm-hmm. comeback and like I can't think of at least in like recent years, there hasn't really been a comeback that was a little bit like, um, you know, this isn't really, this is kind of like a setback or whatever, you know, a little bit, Mm -hmm. usually, you know, groups will have that one that maybe isn't the most popular every now and then, but like for the last several years, they literally have just been getting bigger and bigger and bigger. And I always go in maybe like, maybe I won't love this song the most more than like any other K-pop song. And then I'm always wrong. And it's stuck in my head for the next five months until they have a next comeback. (laughs) But um, I would say probably the song that first did it for me and that like, I just kind of keep coming back to is actually Likey. That's probably my favorite, like in terms of an actual comeback, just, I don't know. I was like a, I wasn't really a Twice fan. Um, like I enjoyed them very, very super casually, just in the way that they were one of the biggest things in K-pop in 2017. And then they released Likey and I was like, oh wait, I could get behind this. And then ever since then, literally every comeback since that dropped, I've just been getting like bigger and bigger and bigger. And now here I am. And I would say they're my favorite girl group. So yeah, Likey, I like it. (laughs) (laughs) And they do like very trendy stuff, you know, like going back to likey like who would have thought that they would have like oh instagram is the biggest new thing so you know what we're gonna do we're gonna create a song and have a concept where you literally click that like button and i'm just like what the hell these girls are geniuses what the hell weren't the lyrics of that song though kind of like daunting were they (laughs) well because i at least i've seen stuff on social media about it where it's like it appears all cutesy and bright like you know hooray Instagram but then like there's an underlying theme of like you can't do anything unless you're perceived as like gorgeous and you get the most like social media traction on stuff yeah I feel like there was a TikTok trend about that for a while where they like it was particularly Momo's part um in the song where it talks about like dressing yourself up you know the lipstick ba 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 part Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and like somebody slowed it down and made it sound really really like terrifying it was like it was like halloween version of likey 
Mm. I'm sure that would still slap. <laughs> yeah, I mean, yeah, it does. But it, it was just it was just an interesting take because like you would assume that a girl group song that is super cutesy would be like the lyrics would be all cutesy and there would be no like serious message under it so like I thought that was interesting I I really like Likey also me and loves to tell a story where we went to Bonchon one time and it was playing on like the tv and I was like doing the dance because mm-hmm. like you can't not do it it's really right it's, like, I was doing it earlier like I mean that song is just good in general but Kelly you ha- you said you you picked a um a favorite song come era from them what what was it I know it was hard well, I mean, song song was likey, but if we're going era, uh, I mean, I, I feel like I speak for a lot of people when I say fancy. <laughs> yeah. Fancy was, was a like, huge one. Yeah. That was, that was like That's literally true. revolutionary in K-pop, I'd say. Like, even if you are not, like, even, even today, like, if you're not a Twice fan, like, specifically, like, everyone knows fancy, everyone can appreciate fancy, and even, like, if you don't like the song, you still know it, and you're probably going to sing along to it. But even then, who really doesn't like the song? Let's be real. <laughs> I honestly didn't like the song that much when it came out. That that actually that happens a good amount of times, actually. But Same. like it is impossible to not get it stuck in your head. And I think that's where they do well with it because then you're like, oh shit, this is really catchy now. <laughs> like now like, I like now this. it's an earworm and now we have to listen to it. Yeah, I was definitely like that too. I didn't, I definitely like first first round, I was like, why? huh? And then I'm like, oh, I understand. And everybody's like, you know, doing the whole dance moves and everything. And I'm just like, yeah, yeah, that makes sense. How about you, Roxy? I really liked Twice's early stuff. Like, I don't know if I can pick like an exact favorite, but like in terms of era, I really like, like Uwa. I like their concept. Uh Uh Um, And it was so much fun. I didn't watch 16, um, but I do remember, I. you know, talk about their debut or whatever. So I did watch it when it came out and I was like, oh, I really like this. <laughs> and yeah. uh, Cheer Up and TT also were very like good shit. Because th- some people don't necessarily like the debut as much song wise, but like as soon as Cheer Up came, that shit went viral real fast. Yeah, I have to agree. Like, I think... Well, I think it's appropriate considering we are in spooky season. We are recording this in the month of October. We should also mention that Twice is well known for their Halloween type or dress up type concepts of their music videos. And, you know, where can you say you really like there's only a few groups out there that has done a zombie concept for their debut right a new one just did classy just did that so that way I feel like they were the next one but no one else has yeah no one like tiara it wasn't even a debut but like tiara did lovey-dovey which was a zombie theme but like who who would have thought like right out the gate we're gonna go zombies and then we're gonna turn these zombies into people that like us and you know what rather than them becoming one we're just like well screw it we're gonna we're gonna you know change it a bit and you're gonna like us and you're gonna join us and I'm just like these girls and then obviously Momo's dance break you know everybody knows what that was and I was just like they're very clever and you know they make well on the whole like every like TT was it was one of them was cheer up also one where they had dressed up or no no well that was like that was like it was like a movie concept yeah they did yeah. they showed different like movie sort of themes mm-hmm. well I'm trying to think of what other music videos off the top of my head oh my god so there what, is what? another Halloween one and I forget which one it was isn't it yes or yes is also yes. similar yeah. yes um like them doing these dress-up type concepts or where they pay like homage to different movies or stuff like that I was like that's what for me that's what makes twice twice because no one's doing it like them and they don't reference like twice and can you bring it back (laughs) next concepts bring them back please I love the scientist stuff and all of that but I want this again it was fun it was quirky we didn't really get that bring that back please (laughs) actually since you brought up like quirkiness 
I feel like that's also just kind of a big thing that's kind of missing in K-pop nowadays. Like, if you think back to, like, second generation, but then also just kind of, like, early third generation, there were a lot of, like, well, not a lot of, but there were, there were, like, groups that were known for their quirkiness. You know, things that were like a little bit more campy, things that just kind of like, it was like groups had their own little shtick, like things like Orange Caramel, stuff like that. Oh. Um, and like, there aren't really at least like bigger names that are known for doing that stuff nowadays. And I, I think that you make a good point that like, ooh, if Twice came back and did something else like that again right now, like we need that. <laughs> yeah, like, cause what was the last one where they, did references to any movie or was that oh what's the one that they did with the what was the movies it's the was, was who did the what is love? yeah there we go it's like wait i should have known it i was the one who wrote that art that wait. one in this issue <laughs> i was the one who did what is love uh in this issue um yes that one um is that really the that, last time they did that i think so because that was like in 2018 yeah i i think it was though everything else has been more like concept heavy rather than like it's definitely much more mature not to say that them doing these like movie references weren't mature either it was different for sure but like they they got into like let let's show like and i'm not complaining about the sexy concept because they look really damn good but um yeah like we haven't really gotten a concept like that searching through it now that is an interesting point and i wonder if it has to do with generational shifts because i feel like to a certain extent a lot of fourth gen groups nobody really does the like definitely not the campy stuff but like nothing super quirky that's not really a thing anymore and i just wonder if that has to do with like trying to get worldwide validation instead of being something different i feel like a lot of groups like if you're gonna get any kind of quirkiness right now it's from like subunits from things and like they're gonna be subunits from like more well-established groups i can't think of any examples off the top of my head But yeah, I feel like it would be, like, it it isn't really in trend right now, but like, I feel like if Twice did it, it would come immediately right back. (laughs) So. Right. Like, yeah, you know what? You're right. I have, we haven't really seen that. Hmm. I mean, like the first thing that came to mind was um, just having like a specific sort of different feel than like the main group. WJSN Choco Me is like all about the super, super cutesy. So it's like, it, it makes sense that they use subunits for that. Speaking of that, Twice has never done subunits. Ooh, you right. You right, they have it. But they have had subunit songs. Yeah, just not like, they not haven't actual. released anything. Yeah, oh, you know what, you're right. And only one of them has gone solo so far um in the seven years and that first stuff was nine so are we gonna get other solo projects that's the question we should i thought didn't didn't we see something for jiho like wasn't that on the horizon ish is, is it like her actual album i i mean well deserved she i was expecting her to go first before nyan to be honest yeah. hold on let me let me clarify here i just feel like i saw something recently I do know there are like rumors going around about a possible subunit coming up here. Um, I mean, I feel like at this point in their career, when you're this far in, you know, especially as like with like JYP, you know, you're constantly trying to think of like, okay, what can we do next to set ourselves apart to keep going because you can't keep doing the same thing over and over again. Mm -hmm. Um, And yeah, I don't, I don't, I don't know. I think that'd be really interesting to see more subunit stuff from them because like, it's surprising to me kind of with how well established they are that it took them this long to have subunit songs. And I think that that really added such a like good flavor to their overall sound, especially when you have some of those members that don't get to have their vocal spotlights too often. And suddenly instead of one of nine, they're one of just three in a song and they have a lot more parts. And I feel like it just really rounded out them as a group. Right. I, I think that, uh-huh. Ooh, who would your ideal subunit be and for me can I have a j-pop like <laughs> can I just have the the Mina Momo and Sana do like a Japanese unit 
and just go full J-pop, just even for an album, just an album. Would love to see that and have the real voices come out because you know sometimes that they don't they're not singing in their actual like singing voices also i guess i lied about the geo thing <laughs> now that i'm looking it up i just thought i saw it somewhere but you know social media things blow up all the time yeah and they don't necessarily have to be true <laughs> yeah no, 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 people no. run with anything oh they but i do. mean i mean jiho would do so well solo i mean why not I mean, you I think the thing about her mm -hmm. too is that I feel like in the like K-pop landscape of things, I feel like she, as a just an like an ace, <laughs> she's so underrated. You know, like with her vocals and as as the leader of Twice, like it's obvious that she's a big name. Like she's literally the spear point of the group. But like, even though she's not the main dancer, I truly feel like she's one of the best performers in K-pop as a whole. Like yeah. you literally cannot help but watch that woman when she's on stage. And it's literally, she's always giving like 150%. Like it's truly incredible to watch her. And like, I remember when I saw them live um, in their last tour, I, again, she just blew my mind. And so if she did go you know, release a solo project, oh, immediately she would kill it. Oh yeah. And I just, I think she deserves a lot more credit than she gets truly. I mean, she, she gets plenty, but she deserves it literally all, so. I have to I have to say I think I'm the only one here that has not seen Twice perform live before. Not even at KCON in New York? I don't think they ever went to New York. Huh? Or if they did it was a year I didn't go. Damn. Cuz like they have only been to KCON LA, I'm pretty sure. Was it only LA? Damn, now I'm feeling like Roxy you need to go to a Twice concert. There's so much fun. This last tour was really fun. Like Yeah, but they only went to LA and Chicago and I can't make myself fly across the country. I don't have the money for that. Do they only do so do two stops? I thought they did more. No. They were, they, they oh, are you talking more. about twice, not KCON? Yeah. Twice, yeah, they they came to New York, but also again, I don't have money. So, like there's so many tours happening, I can't possibly I actually have a funny story about seeing them in New York um, or just like the concept of seeing them. So I, like I, at this point, I loved Twice. Like I, th I think tickets went on sale in like December mm -hmm. uh, last year or something. And like, I loved them, but I didn't feel the need. Like I, I live in Ohio. I didn't feel the need to drive eight hours to see them. I wasn't at that point yet. Um, but I have a friend who was a coworker and Twice was his favorite group and he'd never seen them live. And he asked me if I could help him buy tickets. And I was like, yes, like I bought so many K-pop tickets. Like I will, I'll deliver for you. And I'm thinking like, I'll just buy him them. Like I don't need to go. And then like, as the, the ticketing date approached, I was like, oh, maybe I do want to go. Maybe I, maybe I should do this. And then, so I bought, I was only able to get two tickets because it was such a bloodbath, like most concerts. Yeah. But like, I've also never struggled to, to get tickets. This was like my first time actually truly struggling. So that was, that was something. But, um, it turns out that he ended up not being able to go in the first place. So I just had my ticket because it was just me, just me and him. So I had my ticket and I just gave the extra to my mom and she came along with me. <gasps> and it was just funny because, you know, I was supposed to get it for him. That was the whole point. And then suddenly it's me and my mom just driving, straight up driving to Long Island. And, you know, it was honestly, I left that concert like actually obsessed. And like suddenly I get home, I'm in the hotel bed and I'm like, on Amazon, like looking for little, and then I can looking for where to buy a light stick. I was sad I hadn't bought any merch. Like that concert changed me. Yeah. Okay. For the record, Kelly's mom is really cute. She is also a carrot. And when she posts about her mom, super cute. Um, just wanted to put that out there. But I agree. Like I, I wasn't like I love Twice. Like they are a good, like a favorite girl group of mine. But like I would like top five for me but after going to the concert for them I was just like oh you shot up all the way over there I like I understand why like they're really good live and I think what if you ever get the chance Roxy to also be in a stadium where now like there are more guys than girls and hearing the dynamic of it is so much more different and you're like it's just not all female screaming in here anymore 
it's like what and it's just to have a nice atmosphere to be there because you can see like it's just like not that I like us girls have fun because we do but just like oh yay now the boys get to have fun but don't take it all away I hear that Luna is like that too the Luna concert (laughs) I heard yeah oh true that and then uh, getting to see eyes one when they did cake on too Mm. guys everywhere and you're like it's it's always it's always a trip yeah right? because you're like like the the screams are like like lower, <laughs> the pitch lower. Is lower and you're like oh shit what just happened because like, yeah you're not used to that you're like, i feel like that happened one of the k-cons i don't remember but it you know like a girl group came on it was like holy shit <laughs> Red Velvet, maybe? Were you there? Maybe Red Velvet. Yeah, yeah, Red Velvet. When they, especially when they did Bad Boy up there. Oh gosh, I'm just saying. Like, twice is a concert you you have to go out to. Like, they're amazing live. They dance really well. Visuals are really nice. I do hope that they do bigger venues. They did the stadium one in LA as their encore, so I hope that they do for their next tour even bigger because they can do it. And that way, um, not so much of a struggle, like Kelly mentioned, to get tickets. <laughs> like, or it's just like bigger venue, more options to choose from. But fuck scalpers. <laughs> just saying. Because he still did it for twice. Hmm. Well, Don't that's just it. a thing that can't be avoided at this point. Yeah. I don't know how they get past the system because it's so fucking hard to just get like two tickets for anything ever. I will say... For this last 17 tour, I somehow, like, whatever they did worked. Like, I mean, I can't really speak on, like, the terms of, like, actual scalpers, because I'm sure there was still some there. But, like, they did the whole, you know, official membership pre-sale business. Mm -hmm. And, like, I've done that with BTS before. And it's, I mean, it's also BTS. So, like, that doesn't really count, because it's going to be hard no matter what. But, like, I don't know. I got in for two tickets, or for two concerts, and I got tickets for each with no problem. And it actually worked. So maybe there's hope. (laughs) To be fair, yeah, okay. 80s wasn't that bad. Jay no. helped me with 80s and it was fine. Yeah. Um, they were there were some going fast if you want like the higher level of stuff, but it turned out fine. So yeah, like if your goal is to just get a ticket to go and you're not really particular on where your seats are, doing stuff like that and having like a pre-sale code, so much more beneficial. I think that they people should do that more often rather than a free-for-all sometimes because once that free-for-all happens jesus fucking christ hell no absolutely not i think my only like downside of that is just it sucks that a lot of these pre-sale things are like waitlisted and random and like even if you buy the membership and you sign up for the pre-sale it's like you might get it you might not so but i've also never done anything with that for like i don't i'm assuming jyp does something along those lines but I've never seen anything. So like the twice I just went in and just hoped for the best and it worked out eventually. But I don't know. I don't recall if they did for Stray Kids. I don't recall. I feel like I didn't see anything online about it either. So maybe yeah. maybe they don't do that yet, which like, <laughs> I guess we can only hope. I know. I think ATs was smart in the sense of sign. Like, I think you were guaranteed a pre-sale code no matter what, for this yeah. particular upcoming tour, you were guaranteed a pre-sale code. If you signed as, up. On yeah, like as long site. as you signed up. And I think that's smart to do it that way. And so like, yeah, like, especially, I just like to say this is bit 2022 has been a great year for girl groups in general. And, you know, if you want more people to come out to these girl group shows and bring them out more, please. We barely got any female groups. We, like, we got more than usual this year. But like, um, you know, having a pre-sale code like that with a big group like twice would be so beneficial. And you know that people will show up and show up and again, give them bigger venues because this girl group is massive. I know twice went to Long Island, but like, where were they there? It was at UBS Arena, which I think was a new venue. I'm pretty sure that that was, like, I don't remember what year, but I'm pretty sure it was built in recent years. It was honestly incredible. (laughs) I would go back there for sure. The only thing is that, like, Long Island is a damn hike. (laughs) Oh, yeah. No. It was so wild. Like, I've, you know, usually, 
you know, Newark, New Jersey, everyone knows Prudential Center. That's where everyone goes for concerts or maybe, um, you know, in New York City. But um, it was just very wild for me because I usually drive just to save money and because flying to concerts stresses me out. And so as we're driving literally around New York City <laughs> and I was like, oh, we'll, we'll get there eventually. Yeah, I, I feel like I really made the trek for twice there. Yeah, I think I think I remember hearing a lot of people say that even people that are like live in New York City, they're like, why the fuck is it all the way out in Long Island? <laughs> like, like this is here? like a hike. <laughs> Yeah, like, it's so honestly funny too because the venue is just in the middle of nowhere like there's nothing around it I mean um Rosemont Park is right there so like you, obviously that's a big thing because like it's a big horse race and stuff but like or is it Rosemont Park Belmont Park I'm whatever we got there in the end um <laughs> but like there's literally nothing else around it it's just trees and like the parking lots and that's it but I don't know it was nice Stadiums like that stress me out. And I guess that's because I'm used to like Prudential Center. Just like you can just walk there from the hotel. I hate when like when BTS did their New York show in 2019, that was like out in the middle of nowhere. Like I don't, I don't like that. <laughs> that's also probably why I didn't even consider getting tickets. I was like, I'm not going to drive to Long Island. Like this is too, too far out of the way. So I feel like JYP, if you want more people to go, you should probably pick easier to access venues. <laughs> I agree. The day that K-pop moves away from Prudential Center will be the saddest day of my life. I know people are not a fan of it and everything, but I ooh, I will die on this hill. I love Prudential Center. I will go to any concert there. I don't Been care. there since 2015, dude. I know that place <laughs> like a bag of my hand. Newark exactly. is the worst city in the world, but like, I know it. So like, yeah. this is fine. Exactly. It's like, K-pop don't take me out of my, like, don't take me out of my comfort zone. Don't like it. But, I, well, I've never been there, so, like, I know the area isn't the greatest, but is the venue actually nice, though? Yeah. Yeah, okay. It's, like, you're safe in the block that is the venue, but as soon as you step out of that, like, Mason Hand, you if you're it. alone, don't be. Like, it's, it's like that. So here's the plan, then. Roxy has to see twice. Jay has to come to Newark, New Jersey. Done. <laughs> exactly. I, like, well, hopefully next year who's coming out here next year that is the goal to go on to the east coast because i've never been on the east coast yet so i'm just saying it but it's better be a tour that's worth it and i'll make my way over there i promise and then i hopefully get to see the both of you there <laughs> on the east coast depending on who the artist is but um yeah you know what i can't even lie though like when they did their encore tour here in la wasn't the nicest day either because I mean granted it was right next to uh, a university it was right next to USC but even then there were just like some shady areas around See, here I oh. always have a theory that these when people are booking venues in the U.S. they from like k-pop groups they have like no idea <laughs> of like what's going on in each city because all our cities are so huge and there's always something that's like not okay. There's parts that are not okay. I've already said that obviously in the last episode about DC, they're picking the worst venues in Washington DC whenever they come. Um, but it's just funny to me because like, I'm sure somebody for the twice tour, they're like, oh, this option is cheaper. And it's, you know, cause it's not in New York city without like taking into account how far it actually is like for most people, even if it's like the same state, some states are bigger than countries. Like, yeah. Yeah. I just like, also, it's like, come on. Do more cities. Just do more cities. Roxy needs one to go back to DC. I need one that's a little bit more south in California. California. If I could go anywhere without having to travel eight hours, I would love that. There we go. <laughs> yeah. Midwest has it the worst because there's just. Yeah, so that's true. Yeah. That is true. I literally, what? every concert, I either go to Chicago which is like an hour and a half flight or again, about a seven hour drive or I go to New York city area and which is about the same. So I'm poor. Like, <laughs> I'm a real poor K-pop stan. Oh, for real. Just speaking to the choir here. Like, listen, can't do these anymore and stop. Concerts need to stop being so damn expensive. I miss when a $200 ticket used to get you like, I'm at the front like super front and I had no problems and still got the meet and greets. Now it's like, fuck, it's $400. <laughs> um, 
Hmm. I will say it's cool that it seems like a lot more like smaller groups are coming around though. And like mm-hmm. they are, those smaller groups are doing more cities and yeah. I'm, you know, there's, there's a lot more like theater tours and stuff. Yeah. I know like it's a lot of groups that we've gotten the chance to interview or even just, it's especially easy to get press access for them compared to like bigger groups. Mm-hmm. And I don't know, I think it's cool, especially because that's an easy way to get also newer fans too. So like, I feel like it's a win-win for both sides because, you know, you can drag a friend to, you know, down the street for a cheap ticket. And then suddenly that friend's obsessed with them. Like I remember for Golden Child's uh, meet and live tour they did, they had, I think probably about like eight stops or so roughly around that. And again, I went and I, it was in Chicago. So I mean, still a bigger city, but like, um, I didn't have anyone to go with me. So again, I took my mom (laughs) Mm-hmm. and I did I had an extra ticket so I gave it to her and she only knew a handful of songs from them but she didn't like know of them really and I brought her with me and then she left and she's looking up on like little k-pop profiles website she's looking up all about them and everything so I don't know I think that that's at least a cool trend that's happening with touring is just there are smaller stops it'd just be nice if those bigger groups could also you know capitalize on their popularity and do more cities that's true mm-hmm. I feel like they don't take as many I don't want to say risks, but like chances, these bigger groups, they're like, okay, we can guarantee like this stadium will make us enough money that like we have a net positive. So then they stick to LA, New York city, Chicago. That's pretty much it. So Yeah. But well, like, I guess they're... it's also hard when you consider that like K-pop groups have more members than, you know, like a solo artist or just a, like a band over here in the U S So like traveling is literally just more expensive in general. Like I remember I like the photos of like 17s, like just luggage that have gone viral at airports because it's literally like 180 suitcases or something. Like I cannot imagine how many or just how much it costs just to, you know, book a venue and have to deal with the costs of like having a lot of members and then all the staff for those members and stuff. So, you know, even with a group as popular as TWICE, you know, that's still nine people and then all the staff that would be needed to accommodate those nine people. So yeah, especially the bodyguards. <laughs> yeah. Oh God. Yeah. Cause like, if you think about it, like going back to the whole luggage thing, whether it's twice or 17, you're looking at per member, you're, they're bringing at least two to three checked in luggages. Right. So it's just like, Oh God, you multiply that bet- between all the members. And I'm like, that's a lot of stuff. And then even just thinking mm -hmm. about like costumes, how many outfit changes they have at a concert and how carefully those are going to be packed versus like a member's like personal luggage or something like, and also I'm sure they're probably really heavy too. And I just, yeah, it's gotta be rough. You could be like Yungi or or, uh, who who else is, you can be like them bringing their uh, whole um, production, their at home stuff with them or Jin bringing his whole damn PC with them I'm, I'm just, yeah, that's not a good idea <laughs> I would be so afraid of losing my shit dude I know I freak out when I bring my laptop anywhere because I'm like this is gonna get lost and I will never see it again <laughs> yeah I'm just like y'all bring some stuff that I'm like why are you bringing this here like I get it you know and I mean nowadays I think in in terms of like when you're coming with stuff that you're producing your own music and everything it's becoming a lot more compact and easier to travel with but like I don't know if you should be bringing that the whole entire time because it's just like that's a lot of stuff to carry again like Rex said you might lose it and then I just thought about you know not only is it it's expensive to travel, but production of the actual at each venue is probably expensive too. So it's just like, man, want more cities? How can we make this happen? But at the same time, damn, it must be so expensive to do this tour. And I think you can see on like terms of production, you can see that a lot with like groups that have been steadily getting bigger over here in the US. Like I think like um, with BTS going from like the love yourself tour to the speak yourself tour and just I mean obviously they got very popular very fast but like just the production quality jump from like I remember they just had some projectors pretty much and that was it and I think they had like little platforms and then suddenly you get to the speak yourself tour and like the the, val- the production value was just crazy. Jungkook's flying around the stage. <laughs> yeah exactly god 
Um, and I think um, like with 17 too, only because I can compare that in the same level where like their last tour was again, more understated. And this time, even though the venues were the same, like the production value was just a lot higher. And I can only imagine how much money that cost. Um, I can't compare for twice because I didn't see their previous tour, unfortunately. Mm -hmm. But like, again, I'm sure that there was a jump in quality there too. So you can only imagine what the next step for twice would be. Oh yeah. I would like to definitely see them do like a higher production, like stadium tour. Cause it's well-deserved and a long time coming. And like, I just think bring out bring out more of the confetti guns like what these other groups are doing right now right like we see all the boy groups do it the ladies can do it too more interactive stuff like that because that's fun they they can do it jyp just invest your money correctly please speaking of jyp though um all the twice members renewed their contract yes who saw that coming i did not not me (laughs) nope did not at all i figured some of them would resign but not all of them i thought it would go around the direction of what 2pm did where we're still going to be a group but you know people going off into different management did not see this at all I it's very interesting actually if you think about it sorry didn't mean to cut you off no no go, go ahead um because like got seven is around the same I mean they debuted like a year earlier but like they all of them left <laughs> JYP yeah. as soon as they could and it's like people have been talking about for twice like there are certain members that don't get treated as well as other ones so like it seemed pretty obvious that there would be a split there and I like I don't know what they did to make that not happen like yeah. to be a fly in that room that negotiation room like <laughs> right right but I just would love to observe and like for me personally uh, like the one member who I did not think would resign was B Jungyeon I for sure thought maybe she would be the one member who wouldn't return to JYP but still stick with twice and then also Mina those two I was just like huh but one of the only gr- groups and girl groups to stick around break the seven year curse as well. So, I mean, very happy that at least they re- renewed their contract. I just was not expecting this. <laughs> I think like another thing that kind of had me like intrigued was that we're at a weird, really weird point in K-pop where, you know, usually it is about seven years where groups just kind of fade out a little bit like Mm -hmm. seven years curse exists for a reason it's just because that's usually like the end of like the life cycle of a lot of groups but like Mm -hmm. now that k-pop is like a lot more worldwide in terms of like its popularity we're not seeing that downward trend from a lot of like third generation groups you know it's the fourth generation has not overtaken the third generation yet they're just kind of existing together and so you have big names you know like bts like twice that maybe if they were just in Korea still, maybe they would have had that downward trend at this point. But since like the world itself, like is behind a little bit from K-pop, like they're, we're still going. And I think that that was kind of like twice as literally more popular than they've ever been. So like, even if members wanted it, you know, obviously like it would have blown my mind if they had disbanded or not renewed or whatever at this point. Um, And so, and and I think, you know, I can't really think of any, groups that are on that scale of popularity because they're all reaching about that seven year mark at this point. I can't think of any that have like on a big scale disbanded or not renewed. You know, I mean, even if there have been members that like didn't renew in the like, seven different agencies, those groups are still going. Yeah. Thinking of like, yeah. like Mamamoo with Lee Yin. Um, I That's the one that comes to mind right now. Like these groups are still going, got seven, but I know. I think we're at a really weird time in K-pop. A good time, but a weird time. Yeah, Yeah. that is true. That is a really good point. We don't really see that. Huh. Never thought about it that way. Yeah, I've I've been so focused on, like, second-gen groups just having random comebacks that I didn't even, like, consider that, (laughs) like, to be honest. I also, time isn't real for me, so, like, the fact that it is, like, twice is at the seven-year mark doesn't just register in my brain. 
because that was like you know they were one of the first groups I saw debut once I got into k-pop so it's like I can't fathom that much time has passed (laughs) yeah but like that is an interesting point now that I think about it because I do think third gen is obviously at that crux and sometimes there are random disbandments like the first one that came to my mind is newest just like one day they're like bye and everybody was like, what the fuck? <laughs> oh, see, uh, the one I thought about was G-Fred. It's just like, that too. huh? Where? Where? They were like, right here. And then all of a sudden, bye. No longer going to be a group. And I'm like. Yeah, I feel like that one was a big, that was like a big slap in the face. <laughs> it was because they were that doing so well. And then they're just like, nope goodbye and we are like what the fuck is going on like (laughs) like, it was an upward trend they were going up and then they just all the way down yeah and then now it's kind of like part of me is like when it comes to g friend it's like now we have the two members who have gone solo plus vivis right i'm saying i hope i'm saying that right and i feel like vivis has to work their way back up again yes they have you know the fandom the buddy fandom still supporting them but now it just feels like why did you cut them off there you know like why there why did you nip it so fast oh having war flashbacks to 21 (laughs) (laughs) having actual war flashbacks but like yeah and so I I'm very happy that twice did resign and renew but do we know how long they extended their contract for is it two three years because it's definitely not seven anymore. I'm looking oh, it up right now. Oh, God. I don't know if I'd... You must be really loyal to re-sign a seven-year contract again. And confident. Really, really confident. I don't think they've released exactly how many years online. It just says that they renewed their contract in July. Hmm. So it doesn't In- say how much. But yeah, I would assume not seven more years. No. That's a very long time to be tied down by a piece of paper. (laughs) That's true. Hey, money might be nice, but don't know if you want to stick (laughs) stick around for that long. Hmm. So I guess we're because we're we're reaching the end of the episode very soon. What is I just for the both of you question? quick question what is something you would like to see twice do like concept wise song wise style wise in the coming future now that their contract is renewed I just for me I want them to bring back the whole like paint like dressing up thing and doing that kind of quirky concept again that's what I would like them to bring back but do you have any preference or something you'd like to see them do differently in the next coming of years I feel like the only thing that I can really think of off the top of my head would be subunits again, just because I know it's hard to keep like bringing it back to the same thing, but like after seeing them live, there were just members that stuck out to me that I wouldn't have anticipated were the ones that like would stick out. Um, like, you know, going into a twice concert, you expect, you know, people like Momo or Jiyo or Nyon to like really stick out for you because, you know, those are powerhouses. But I remember that like when I did see them live, the one member that I could not stop, like that I could not take my eyes off of was Nina. Like Mm. she just had this kind of like quiet magnetism to her where like when she was on stage, my eyes were just drawn to her and I was like, what is she? What's happening to me right now? Mm -hmm. Um, And then thinking like um, another one is Jungyun she was just incredible live. Like her vocals just blew me away. Um, And she's so funny and she's so wholesome. And I just, I would love to see more like subunits. I mean, it would be great because like the vocal colors and stuff and how that kind of mixes together, but just seeing other members getting more of a spotlight um, and just seeing like what they can bring to it. Because I think that you know, if you have someone like Mina, where she is a little bit more understated, not that she doesn't, not that she blends in or anything, but she's just got like, she's more quiet in the way she's in your face about it. And I think like, if you could have something where she gets something that's more of a spotlight, like, and not just her, obviously, but just an example, like, I think that would be really impactful. And I would love to see what they could do that could, that like, something like that would really change up, I think, what they're capable of. Um, and I think that goes for any member. So I would just love to see that. Or I guess even more solos, 
because that's kind of the same idea. I think that Nyon, um, her solo was kind of more <laughs> kind of what I expected a little bit. Like it was obviously very good. And of course it got stuck in your head just like any twice song. Um, but I would love to see what more members, like what their solo concepts would be, like what they, you know, what they feel like they are as a performer and what they can bring to the table. Ooh, I just had a thought. Imagine Momo or Armenia doing something similar to what Irene and Sulky did from Red <gasps> Velvet. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if I want to put myself through that right now. Or like doing like a, a concept similar to what Sulgi did with her recent solo debut. I'm oh. just saying, imagine if one of them decided to do that. That would be that would be devastating. Everybody would never recover. <laughs> yeah, that and then everybody's wallets. More! <laughs> Give me more. We'll pay more. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. I kind of want to see them do some sort of like darker concept because they don't do that. I'd just be interested to see what it looks like. And obviously that's the kind of music I tend to like. So I would just want to see how they would perform that because most of the time they do the upbeat cutesy, even with like a zombie um, yeah. concept. It was like a very, I don't know if campy is the word. It's just like very upbeat. Obviously it's not dark or whatever. So. I think like, that would fit a couple of the members. I don't know about all of them. <laughs> Imagine Sana. Oh, <laughs> with a dark concept. I don't want to do that either. <laughs> Just, it would be a different picture. But like, you know, they've done darker concepts, but nothing of like what the scale of Roxy is looking for. Or like similar to like what Sulgi and Irene are doing for Red Velvet. But imagine that would be wild to see more yes because they are older they can pull it we off we need the j-line subunit like we said earlier yes. imagine what they could give us <laughs> see but i feel like there would be some people that would hate that more than anything it's so k-pop <laughs> everyone you can't something. win you can't win <laughs> absolutely oh i also had the thought of i mean we're used to like the upbeat like twice has like a blueprint to themselves like they know what works and they've done things that you know are signature to them they have that their own style but i would also love to see twice tackle noise music similar to itsy they can do it i i they have the different range to do it so i would like to see them do something like that or like go the nct route as well I don't know if we should go full NCT there. I think maybe <laughs> dial it back three or four before we hit that. That's my personal opinion, though. But yeah, just something different, you know, because it, it would definitely throw people for a loop with this one if they did that. That's a good point. And I feel like if you think about it, even though they've played with their concepts, like sonically, a lot of their music has been kind of the same vein. I feel like the thing that changed it up at least for me, the most sound wise was actually probably scientist. Um, mm -hmm. Because I know actually a lot of people didn't like it. Well, not a lot of people, but I know that like, it's not a lot of people's favorites. And I don't really know why, because I actually really loved it. And for me, it's because it was, they used their lower registers. Yeah. Cause like twice is very much like in their head voices. Like they're very much on a higher, like, you know, they're hitting those higher notes. But like in Scientist, it's a, it was a lot more dialed back. You yeah. literally had members, like people like Nina, Momo, Jungyun, like they were all singing down low. And mm -hmm. like, I don't know, that was a game changer for me. And I think that if they kind of experimented a little bit more towards that route, where it's just the way they're using their voices too, I think that that would be interesting but like again you know that was met with criticism I, I can't think of examples I just know people didn't like it too much for some reason <laughs> maybe I just blocked it out but I think that that would be good for them too yeah well I think we all look forward to seeing what twice is going to bring in the future especially with this contract renewal so only time will tell but I mean 
all of us are in for the ride and we're all game for it. I'm looking forward to the next tour because this recent tour was my first ever like twice tour that I ever got to see. So it's just like, I had fun. Would definitely do it all over again for the next tour. Come back soon, please. Gotta bring Roxy. <laughs> yes, Roxy has to go. <laughs> I don't make enough money. <laughs> I barely afford going to ATs. It's okay, we'll sponsor it for you. We'll make it happen. There we go. Yeah. Well, I guess I can't say no if that's the case. <laughs> we'll chip in. It's like, Roxy has to go. And I have to go to Newark. <laughs> I just wanted to say thank you, Kelly, for joining us on this episode. We appreciate you. And um, Kelly is one of our writers. And she is also one of the managing editors. So you'll see her name floating around occasionally when it comes to the craze stuff. So thank you so much for being here, Kelly. We appreciate you. Yes, thank you for having me. I love Twice and I love you guys. So it was great to talk to you about them. Yay. And you're always welcome to join us on any of future episodes. Just let us know. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Okay. And with that, uh, any final thoughts on uh, what we discussed today? Stand, Stand twice, twice and buy the. <laughs> there we go. Stand twice and buy the mini Z before it's all gone. Seriously, these are going out. So do it. Yes, they are uh, for sale on our website. Um, you can find it. There's a big image for it as soon as you sign on. Um, if you're interested, there's also digital versions available if you don't want to pay for shipping and for a print copy. So those are available and cheaper and unlimited since I don't have to ship those out. So we'll always have those in stock. Uh, what else? Follow us on social media. <laughs> <laughs> it's been a while. <laughs> We're not used to this. <laughs> uh, if you want to keep up with more Twice things, um, I'm sure there's always going to be somebody that's writing about them. So keep an eye out on our website. Thank you so much for checking out this new episode. Again, keep up with us on social media. We shall see you in the next episode. And we hope you guys enjoyed. And don't forget to give us a rating as well. But we'll see you in the next one. Bye. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye. Bye.